Hello there, and welcome to your Autism Spectrum Disorder screening. How you doing today? I see. I hope by the time you leave this screening, you feel even just the littlest bit better. So to start, I'd like to ask just a couple of confirmation questions, if you don't mind. Wonderful, thank you. So if I could first just have your name. Good, and date of birth. And is that your preferred name? How do you like to be addressed? Excellent. So, the object of our screening today is not to get a diagnosis at the end. This is actually the step before that. So, if we feel that you may qualify for a diagnosis, then this will be your referral for a formal evaluation. That's where you do, like, the ADOS2, the interviews, the family interviews, different histories, the whole shebang. So, what exactly made you seek out this screening for autism? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just jot that down. Good. Excellent. So just so we're on the same page, I'd like to chat with you just a moment about what ASD consists of. So it is a neurodevelopmental condition, which means that it affects the way the brain and the nervous system develop. So this, you can see differences in thinking, in behaviors, even in movement. Now the DSM-5, which we use for diagnosis, it focuses on the social or communication deficits or differences and restricted repetitive behaviors, interests, or activities. So for example, someone with ASD might exhibit too much or too little eye contact, a lack of or strange facial expressions, difficulty in interpreting sarcasm, humor, unspoken social rules, maybe even lying, difficulty in small talk or conversations not including one's interests, and for the restricted repetitive behaviors, interests, and activities, we might see stimming, for example, echolalia, which is when one repeats another person's words. There's a lot of different kinds of echolalia. They might have distress in small changes to plans or routines, intense focused interest, in unusual objects or subjects, which we might call a special interest, and hyper or hyposensitivity to sensory stimuli. Now, ASD is measured in three levels, from low support or level one to highest support needs or level three. Now, generally, Level three can be most easily identified because those individuals aren't able to mask or camouflage those behaviors that stand out as autistic. And we find that a lot of times people with level one or even some with level two ASD do not get diagnosed until much later in life. Luckily, we know much more about ASD than we used to, so it's easier for us to get those little bits that we might have missed before that do indeed point to an ASD diagnosis. So this screening is meant to support evidence for an ASD diagnosis, 
or point to something else that might fit better, like ADHD, generalized anxiety disorder, or even something like a sensory processing disorder. This screening is a mix of ASD-related questions. We also have ADHD, because that's a common comorbidity, or something that shows up kind of like autism. And we'll also test things like cognition, intelligence, that sort of thing. It's quite a mixed bag. So we are going to start with some kind of strange screening questions. And this isn't strictly based on the DSM-5 criteria, but is more of a mix of observations I've had over the years that point to these little side symptoms or quirks, idiosyncrasies, that help support an ASD diagnosis. For example, do sudden sounds like sirens, fireworks, or cars backfiring distress you? And do you use any object or motion to help you think or calm yourself down? So for example, perhaps you might have a hair elastic that you play with. Maybe you play with your fingers. Maybe you do a sort of skin rubbing or bouncing on your heels, maybe so that you can think clearer, or maybe you do this to calm down. Does that sound like something you might do? Okay. Do you find vague or unclear instructions nearly too impossible to do? What I mean by that is if, for example, someone said, just go put that over there somewhere. Would you be able to do that immediately? Would you have to think about it? Would you have to ask clarifying questions? Good. Do you use gestures or motions that other people find strange? For example, you might walk on your toes you might do what is colloquially called the T-Rex arms. You might do hand flapping. You might do sort of a rocking motion. Okay. Do you often freeze up in conversation and not know what to say to the point where maybe conversation feels stilted, or there are quite a few awkward pauses. Good. Has anyone told you you make strange or weird expressions in pictures? For example, you might take a picture with someone and they point out that you're doing something odd with your face or your smile looks fake, for example. Do you ever eat something and, in the middle of it, become hyper-aware or even disgusted by the texture or flavor? Most notably, I hear this about eggs a lot. Does it distress you if strangers touch or bump into you. For example, if maybe they're trying to get something you're in front of and put a hand on your shoulder, or maybe their skin brushes yours. Do sensory stimuli like strange noises or textures leave an itching feeling in your teeth? This strange sort of, yeah, the best way I can describe it is an itching in the teeth. Okay. 
Do you ever get told that you have little or no common sense? Maybe that you don't have any intuition? Or when someone says, you'll figure it out, and then you question why you can't just figure it out? Okay, very good. So now we're going to move on to the examination, and we're going to start with a hearing test. You'll give me just a moment here. Paper. There we go. So this hearing test is going to involve hearing a high and a low tone. So I am going to have you signal and hold up your hand where you could say yes. When you hear the tones go high, then low in a row. For example, it might go low, 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 high, low. And that part where it goes high, low is where I want you to signal, all right? Okay, so from this point onwards, I will need to be touching you for the examination. Is that okay with you? Wonderful. Let's get our headphones on. you're listening for, that particular pattern. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. a little quick attention test. And now I am going to have you tell me, step by step, how you would teach someone to brush their teeth using your hands. For example, you might think of it like trying to teach an alien who's never brushed their teeth before, how you would do that using your hands. Mm hmm Okay, yep, using the hands. Mm hmm Yeah, step by step, just everything you do. Mm hmm Okay, keep going. Good. Good, very good. Now I am going to say a list of five nouns. I will say this list twice, and then I'm going to change one of them. And I'd like you to tell me which one I had changed. For example,
Which one of those did I change? Good. Stove. Good. Letter. Apple. Carpet. Lamp. Wood. Letter. Apple. Carpet. Lamp. Wood. Letter. Which one changed there? Good, it was Apple. Now for the next one we have Color, Painting, Bread, Fish, Metal. Color, Painting, Bread, Fish, Metal. Color, Painting, Bread, fish, melon. Which one of those changed? Very good. Metal. Last one. Egg. Snack. Bird. Ball. Sky. Egg. Snack. Egg, snack, bird, bark, sky. Which one changed there? Good ball. Now we are going to do a test with some cards here. I have number cards. And I have shape cards that have different colors in them. So I am going to have you blink when you see a certain number, color, or shape that I tell you beforehand. So for example, if I were to say, blink when you see the number three, I will show you the cards here. And you would blink when you see the number three. So, let me shuffle these real quick. And if you could blink when you see the number seven. Blink when you see the number seven. Very good. And if you could blink when you see the number four. Blink when you see the number four. Very good. And blink when you see the number two. You could blink when you see the number zero. Very good. Now we are going to work with the shape cards. 
If I could have you blink when you see the Pentagon. Blink when you see the Pentagon. Very good. Now if you could blink when you see the triangle. Blink when you see the triangle. Very good. You can blink when you see the rectangle. Blink when you see the rectangle. Very good. That was quick. Yep. Now, I'm going to have you blink when you see the hexagon. Blink when you see Example here we have yellow, we have green, we have purple. So if you could blink when you see the color orange, blink when you see the color orange. You blink when you see the color brown. Good. And now Blink when you see the color purple. Blink when you see purple. Good. Very good. So, let me just jot this down. Just tell me a little bit about this picture. Mm hmm. Excellent. Mm hmm. Good. All right. Very good. Now I'm going to put some different pictures on screen and I want you to tell me a story using these pictures. I'm not going to give you any information. Just tell me a story, make up your own story, about what's happening in these pictures. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. 
Alright, and that'll about wrap it up. Okay. To spell a few words forwards and backwards. These are all five letter words. They're not difficult, they're rather common words. So if you could just spell them forward and back. The first word is spice. Spice. Like what one uses for baking. Good. And backwards. E-C-I-P-S. Very good. And the word black, as in the color. A-C-K. And backwards. Good. The word maybe. Word maybe. Can you spell that forward and back? Good. And backwards. E B Y. Very good. Now I'm going to ask you to describe some emotions for me. More specifically, how do these emotions feel? Can you tell me what it feels like to feel joy? of fear. What does that feel like? Okay. And embarrassment. How does that emotion feel? story using these three objects. So first, quite a few objects to choose from. I think maybe this one right here. This popsicle stick. And perhaps This jade comb and maybe hmm, I think this little LED light.
you could make up a story using these three objects. Yeah, sounds a little strange. Yeah, get your imagination working a little bit. You could make up a story. It doesn't have to be an epic, but just something short and sweet about these three objects. Mm-hmm. That'll do. Very good. Now, I am going to have you interpret a proverb. So, if I were to say the adage, you can't have your cake and eat it, which some people also add a two at the end. You can't have your cake and eat it too. What does that mean? When people say that proverb, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Identify some objects. I'll hold something up and you tell me what it is. All right? Wonderful. So let's start. I'll start with something easy. What is this? I've already seen this one before. Good. Tongue depressor, popsicle stick you want to call it there. And what about this? What is this object? Pink colored pencil. Very good. And how about this object? What is this? Yes, it is a retractable measuring tape. And how about this? A pair of scissors. Very good. say it is a brush. This is actually a sensory brush, but it is absolutely just a brush as well. And what about this? What is this object right here? Magnifying glass, good. How about this? Good. Gold ribbon. or wooden forceps. Yep. And how about this? What is this? Yes, a tuning fork. Very good. And how about this? Paintbrush. Excellent. What about this object right here? What is this? Flashlight. Good. And 
this. Another easy one for you. It's a little LED candle. And how about something a little more difficult? What is this object? This is called a Babinski hammer. It's a type of reflex hammer. And let's see, how about one last one? Another easy one to make up for the previous one. Yes, a comb. Jade comb. Excellent. So, let me adjust. Good. Now we're going to do a little bit of math. I'm going to have you take the number 100 and I'm going to have you subtract 6 from that. What is a hundred minus six? Ninety-four. And if you could subtract six from that number, from ninety-four. Eighty-eight. And again, six from eighty-eight. Eighty-two. And again, 76, again, 70, and another, 64, and last one, 58. Good. Now, this is going to be a little bit of an interesting test. I am going to show you an object, and I want you to try to make the shape of the object with your hands as quickly as possible. For example, well, I'm going to try something really easy. If I show you this object, maybe you just make kind of a straight shape with your hand, for example. Or if I have this object, Maybe you make a ball with your fist and hold your hand across so that it kind of mimics the shape, right? Okay, so, just do your best. If I were to show you this object, could you mimic that shape using your hand? And how about this? Don't worry about the difference in size, it's just the shape. Good. Yep, yeah, pretty easy. And how about this? Just the general shape. If you could mimic this shape here. Mm, yeah. Yes, fairly easy there, too. Good. Well, how about this one? Mm-hmm. Good, good. And I wonder... Maybe we'll just do something like this. Do you generally mimic that shape? Good. This right here with the semicircle and the straight edge almost looks like the letter D. Very good. And mm, how about this general shape. And this. Mm-hmm. Yep, 
very good. That one has a rather similar shape to this object, for example, and even the magnifying glass to a point. Let me see, I think. Let's try this one. General shapes. kind of difficult, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Right, something of making your hand like this and then having a little offshoot. That looks kind of odd, doesn't it? Satisfies the prompt, but it is a little odd. And I think we'll finish off with something easy. Yep, we got the little, the little tie here as well, just for something fun. Yep, that'll do it. Very good. Now, if I could have you tell me how you got here from the reception desk. If you could be as specific as possible, as if you were telling me directions. I've never been here before. You could give me directions from the reception desk to this room. How would you describe that? There we go. Excellent. So, that is going to conclude the general screening. However, there is one final question. And this one is where we discuss a little about how you felt about the different tests. If there were any particular ones that stood out to you, that were rather confusing, that Maybe you wanted more context on, for example, any of these that maybe were a little easier for you, even. I just want to get your thoughts and feelings. You can tell a lot about a person and the way that they think, more specifically, if it seems different than the norm. If you let someone just describe their experiences, really. Now from here, since a lot of this test is subjective, it relies on my observations, my feelings, your observations, your feelings, and we also just talked a little bit about your experience at the end. I am going to bring this to my team, and we're going to have a little chat about it, seeing if this is something we want to move further with with a referral, or if we think that perhaps there is something else going on. So, you should hear back from me in three business days, and I will have an answer for you, how we want to proceed. And if you feel like 
that answer is not what you are looking for. We can absolutely do another screening. We can do more questions, different tests, however you want to go about that, all right? Excellent. Any questions for me at all? I can't tell you any of my sort of preliminary thoughts. That's why I want to discuss this with other people. We want to make sure that we're leading you on what we believe is the right path for you, the correct path for what you're dealing with. All right. Okay, so with that, I'd like to thank you so much for coming into this screening and cooperating with these tests. I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night. Patreon, or I also have a Ko-Fi link for a one-time donation.